Deb, I think we are live. Thank you. How about you uh, juggle Zoom and... We are uh, actually live YouTube. right now. There's no one watching. Well, maybe there's a couple coming. Yeah, if you want to sit, sit over there. Always have to send the stream out a couple minutes early to make sure that it works. It does appear to be working. And our construction project manager is going to show up here. Grab before you do that. If you need it, for him to talk something back up. When you're ready to talk, you just need to press the mute button right there, and that makes the mic active. Yeah. Yep. The yellow light's off, you can speak. And we are live. Thank you. Are we early by two minutes? Two minutes, we're early. Shall we wait just a couple minutes so everyone can get on? Yeah, we have 16 viewers at the moment. Good. Everyone out there watching, can you see and hear us as clearly as it looks on my end? You can uh, type in the comments and I'll see those pop up. Also, if you have any questions, pop those up as well. Wake up, Deb. Joe, John we are Genevieve's live. Talking to him. I just emailed John back also. Gotcha. Okay. So you know, Joe, we are live. I'm here. <laughs> just for a little bit. Okay, I have two thirty. That's because you're in. Food oh, it's three thirty your time. That's right, Eastern time. Thank you. Well, with that being said, gentlemen, may we go ahead and proceed, and I will start with introductions. How's that sound? Do we have people on board? Yes. Well, first of all, good afternoon to our Cypress Woods family and friends in Video Land. Um, Today, we hope to provide an overview and schedule of our upcoming phase five construction plan. During this call, we encourage any viewer to send in your questions through the chat feature on your YouTube or Zoom uh, to David, our property manager, manager, and he will present your question to our presenter who is Mr. Dwayne Truitt. Now, many of you met Dwayne during the developer's town hall presentation of Laguna Creek Phase 5 in January of this year. Um, Dwayne is not only the manager of the development project, but is one of the three owners of L26 LLC that is actually building this magnificent new section of Cypress Woods. So I am pleased to welcome Dwayne to the podium and provide for you new and exciting information. Dwayne? Thank you, Deb. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll uh... 
pick it up so I don't have to hunch over here. Um, what we wanted to do today uh, was to provide um, an introduction and overview to the construction process that is uh, shortly to begin in Laguna Carib or what's been known up till now as Section E. Uh, we've gone through a, a pretty intensive um, energetic process since the end of January when we uh, completed our purchase of the property. Um, we created uh, a number of submittals that went to uh, both the county as well as the state of Florida that uh, have been reviewed, in some cases approved, in other cases they're still pending uh, a completion. Uh, what we have right now is we have sufficient authority to go ahead and proceed with our construction with our building permits. And so that's why we decided this would be a good time to brief everybody in the community on what they can expect from this construction process. Um, our construction right now is perceived or anticipated to be a two-phase process. We're going to do phase one this year. Hopefully we'll be starting sometime in the next week or so, and, uh, pending whatever happens with uh, Hurricane Laura, <laughs> which uh, apparently if you've been watching the uh, National Hurricane Center, that's uh, anticipated to roll right over the top of us sometime between Monday and Tuesday. So that might conceivably have some impact. But uh, assuming we get past that without too much damage here, uh, we'd get started uh, shortly. And we're looking at approximately six months of construction for what we call phase one. Phase one is the delivery of essentially everything it takes to create and open for use and occupancy 137 RV lots in Laguna Carib. The um, the work that's involved in getting to a delivered finished lot is what's going to take place over these next approximately six months. It involves a lot of earthwork, uh, underground utility construction, paving, drainage, um, lighting, landscaping, um, finishing up of the RV pads with, uh, with pavers and electrical utility uh, pedestals and so forth, everything it takes so that somebody can occupy one of these lots. What is going to be deferred until next year is what we call phase two, and that's going to be the construction of the vertical amenities. And included in that is the new clubhouse facility, as well as the resort-style swimming pool and other uh, facilities associated with the pool and the deck. Uh, you know, a variety of fire pits and um, cabanas and so forth, uh, as well as some additional um, facilities that we may be able to deliver in phase one. And these include um, some non-vertical amenities such as pickleball courts, a putting green, a dog park, um, recre or excuse me, a trailer parking lot, and some bocce courts. So if we can get those delivered in phase one, we're going to try to do that. Uh, we're also looking at potentially, even though we may not be able to deliver a clubhouse this year, we may be able to uh, set things up so we bring in one or two food trucks, which require that we put in a parking lot and associated landscaping and lighting to go with that. That would later on, the following year, serve the clubhouse facility. So that's the basic scope of what we're going to be doing. I'm going to turn it over here in a few moments after I'm done to Glenn Stasiak. He's the project manager with Cougar Contracting. Cougar Contracting has been selected uh, and are being contracted by L26 Development to be our major site work contractor. We'll also have a, a, a few other contractors working here over the course of this uh, phase one project. That will include a landscaping contractor, uh, irrigation system contractor. Um, we'll have possibly some uh, subcontractors that will be doing uh, some of these minor amenities like the, the pickleball courts and uh, the, the, the putting green and so forth. But our major site work contractor responsible for most of the work and most of the work that you're going to be probably most concerned with is Cougar Contracting. Um, in doing this work, it's going to inevitably involve a certain amount of 
I don't know how else to put it, but inconvenience to the residents of this resort, and it's unavoidable. I mean, it's just, you know, if you've, you've lived in the real world and you've gone through highway construction and whatever community you live in, then you know what I'm talking about. There's going to be trucks moving through. There's going to be a certain amount of noise. There's going to be a little bit of dust. Uh, hopefully not too much, since most of the dirt work will be done during the, uh, the rainy season here. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, it's unavoidable. But what we're going to do is do the best that we can to minimize the inconvenience that comes from that process. And part of that is by shortening the construction period. That's why we're going for as short a period as we can. We think we can get it all done in about six months worth of work, you know, plus or minus. The plus or minus depends on, you know, if uh, we get a couple more of these uh, tropical storms move through, well, that's going to probably slow things down a bit, but hopefully uh, Laura <laughs> next week will be the only one we have to put up with. Um, but, uh, but we are trying to do that as quickly as we can, and furthermore, the, the most, um, I don't know how to put it, the, the most obvious part of the heavy work will be the dirt hauling. We're going to be bringing in roughly 100,000 cubic yards of dirt. And, you know, maybe a lot of you, you don't know what 100,000 yards looks like. It's a lot of dirt. <laughs> it's a lot of dirt. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to involve, <laughs> it's going to involve a lot of truck traffic to bring that dirt in. And it's a two-way haul. In other words, they, they come in loaded with dirt, and then they're going to have to leave the resort empty and, and go make another run. Uh, we're looking at upwards of 300 trucks a day, three to 500. That's a lot of trucks. <laughs> and these are not small trucks. These are 18 cubic yard, you know, three axle dump trucks. Um, and so, you know, you're going to notice that, and it's going to be really, really imperative upon everybody, uh, the contractors, us as developers, and you as residents of Cypress Woods, that this be done safely. Glenn's going to talk a little bit about uh, how we manage the safety of all this truck hauling, uh, but I do want to really emphasize with all of our residents that, hey, look, you have to, as they say uh, in the military, if you've ever spent any time in the military, you have to keep your head on a swivel. Uh, you know, you may not be used to seeing 18-yard cubic, cubic yard dump trucks driving by your driveway. And you're going to have to look before you leap. And don't be pulling out into the road in front of one of these trucks because they're not going to stop as fast as your golf cart will. So uh, it's going to be imperative to, uh, to, to be on the lookout and to think safety and act safely. And likewise, on our end, and from the developer and, and construction contractor's perspective, we're going to be looking out for you. We've We've briefed all of our folks, truck drivers, uh, dump truck drivers, and even just the guys driving pickup trucks, you know, be on the lookout for residents in golf carts in particular, and especially important, observe those speed limits of 15 miles an hour. That's the best way we can keep people safe. There'll also be some specifics that we'll talk about in terms of how we keep um, the construction traffic separated from the regular traffic at the entrance uh, and as well as on the haul route. We're going to talk about the haul route a little bit as well. So that's where people are going to have to be particularly aware is when they're driving their vehicle, their, their golf cart, their car, their pickup truck, whatever, on that haul route because that's where the construction traffic is going to be. We'll also talk a little bit about access and how we control that access, both coming into Cypress Woods RV Resort, as well as that access coming into and out of the construction site, which is what you've been referring to as Section E, and we now call it Laguna Carib. So with all that as a general introduction, I'd like to hand it over right now to Glenn, and he can go over some of more of the particular details, and then I'll dive in from time to time as well. And then uh, we'll also be taking questions from the audience. So with that, Glenn. Okay, thank you, Dwayne. Uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Glenn Stasiak. I'm with Cougar Contracting, project manager. Uh, I'd like to just a little bit about Cougar Contracting. Uh, we're a Fort Myers-based company that's a third generation own, uh, privately owned company here in Fort Myers. Our main office is about two miles down the road. 
So our ownership is very dedicated to this project from the very inception that Dwayne started the discussions with us. And he stressed to our ownership the importance of the safety and the, and the vehicle traffic and the concerns of the association uh, quite, quite directly. So we understand and we can appreciate it. And we have the full support. I have the full support of our ownership to do whatever it takes to get this project done successfully and, and uh, safely. Uh, like Dwayne said, there's going to be a lot of trucks coming in and out with the fill material. Uh, we're we're going to, once we start the clearing operation, which we hope to start next week, about three or two or three days later, we're going to start bringing the fill material in. There are going to be tractor trailers as well, bringing heavy equipment in. At times, they're going to, it's going to be difficult to get some of this equipment in here as well. So just be patient with us, please. We'll, we'll get them in safely. All of the uh, haulers have been on site. They've looked at the truck route. They're very much aware of it. We're going to post a uh, uh, one of the. Tr we have a partner for the trucking on the fill material, the supplier called T Disney Trucking and Grading. Uh, they're going to have a man at the gate full time, bringing the materials in, monitoring the gate and the, and the truck speeds and and the safety aspect of it. Uh, we will have signs post it throughout for the truck route so the truckers know which direction to go uh, as well as other materials we uh, i know we're talking a lot about the fill dirt yes you're going to see that but you're also going to see tractor trailers coming in here with pipe materials with precast structures for manholes sewer manholes storm drain structures so it's it's going to be a lot of a lot of different materials coming in and out uh, we uh First thing we're going to start off with, as Dwayne said, is our cleaning operation. That's going to be a subcontractor that we partner with on all of our jobs. And I, I personally was with him this morning talking about the project. Uh, they're going to have some big equipment. So, you know, we're going to talk about safety a little later and access to site. So uh, that's the first thing you're going to see. And then our fill operations are going to start. And right behind that, we have uh, our utilities. As Dwayne said, we're trying to get this project done. In, in six months. So it's a lot of work, a lot of activities in a short period of time. So the, the volume of vehicles and people, we're going to have anywhere from 10 to 75 people on site working at a given time. It's all so we can shorten the duration of, that we're out here and uh, affecting your surroundings. We want to get in and out as fast as we can. Uh, once we have the utilities installed, or as we're installing the utilities, we're going to start working on the roads. You'll see us working on the roadways. And at the same time, the, the RV pads themselves. It's going to be a, a production line a, a approach where we're going to work multiple different trades as we uh, progress in order to meet the schedule. Uh, once the roads are in, then we're, then we're uh, uh, like uh, Dwayne mentioned, some of the amenities, the bocce ball courts, the pickleball, the putting green, little dog track area, dog area, we'll be working on as well. It's important that we I know all understand that it is a construction site. It's, it's a, vain, a dangerous site. It's got a lot of moving parts, especially at this pace that we're going to be working at. So nobody from outside should be inside that construction at any time. Even when we're not working, there's going to be things, maybe open areas, open holes, unsafe footing, uh, walkways. You know, it rains, you, can, you don't see how deep the water is. Just please, please, for your own safety, stay out of there all the time. Day, night, weekends, we're not here even. I know the curiosity, everybody likes to go see what's going on and watch the progress, but please, for your own safety, stay out, and especially during the day uh, when the work's going on. Uh, if you have questions, I'll always be around. We have two very experienced uh, superintendents going to be uh, monitoring the project, our form and our, you can, you know, see somebody else site. If you have a question, ask them a question they know they'll try to answer the question the best they can if we have any problems with truckers i'm sure duane uh, will hear about it uh and we'll address it properly uh, we got a simple rule when it comes to safety you know we are we have certain expectations and if they our expect, expectations are not met then then they go work someplace else that's it's as simple as that so uh i think that's about it and i'll turn it back to duane thank you uh glenn and and that sort of brings up a couple other topics that I know are going to be of interest to everybody. One is the work hours and work days. Our plan is to work, uh, our normal work hours will be 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
and work days will normally be Monday through Saturday. Uh, we don't intend to work on Sundays. I'm not even sure it's even legal to work on Sundays in Lee County, but, uh, but we won't be working on Sundays. Uh, if, if it's ever necessary to work later um, than 6 p.m., it would have to be special circumstances for a limited period of time. We'd let the resort know. Uh, we certainly don't want to be creating a nuisance where you, you know, can't enjoy your, your, your home, your RV, uh, be able to eat your dinner or, or sleep at night or what have you. Um, with respect to um, access, uh, we're going to have two kinds of access at the front gate. And this is one of the things we talked about in an earlier meeting that we had today with the resort staff uh, and several members of the board who participated with us. Uh, we're, we're intending to separate all the ingressing or, or incoming traffic coming from Luckett Road. So if the construction vehicle traffic will all be on the inner lane closest to the guardhouse and all the residential traffic will be directed to the out, outboard lane. Uh, normally, of course, you'd have a keypad that you'd have to access if you're a vendor or a visitor uh, on the inner lane, but our intent is that we're going to leave the gates open throughout the entire work day. So essentially, uh, you won't have to use the keypad to get a visitor in the door or a, a contractor working on your property or what have you. Um, we're also, I understand, David, do you want to say something about the Welcome Center reopening? Right, uh, we will be reopening the Welcome Center. So uh, any uh, vendors that need to come sign in or uh, guests coming in asking for directions and things, that, that will be open regular business hours for us from uh, 8 to 4 every day. Yeah, and we're also going to uh, design and erect uh, a sign that will go up at the entrance that will provide uh, both words as well as a graphic, you know, map so that people can see, okay, this is where construction goes, this is where I go, um, so that hopefully we'll minimize any confusion as, as people come up to our, our gatehouse, because it will be different. And, you know, again, um, None of us is used to this, so we're gonna. It's gonna take a little while to get used to it. But I think, uh, you know, we're we're asking for everybody's forbearance and patience, and I think we can get through this as long as we can keep safe. Everything else we can work with. Uh, safety is the number one concern. Um, with respect to um, access to the job site, as Glenn said, you know, we absolutely have to keep residents. And visitors and anybody who's not directly involved in the uh, construction work, they have to stay out of Laguna Carib. And those entrances will be posted. We'll have gates locked in the evening. Um, there may come some point, maybe in the final couple of weeks of the project, where we've got essentially all the construction work is done and all we've got are some final inspections and walkthroughs that we might be able to open up the gates and let people walk through, you know, you know, walk their dog or what have you, but uh, but not as long as there's any actual real construction work going on. Dwayne, that, that property is not part of Cypress Woods property at the moment, correct? So, it, you know, residents would be trespassing to go back there. It's not just a matter of stay out of this area. It's you have no real reason to be back there. Right, yeah, and, and not that we want to be um, legalistic about things, you know, we're, we're neighbors, we want to be good neighbors, but for everybody's safety, it's really absolutely necessary to, to keep people that are not authorized from being inside that construction zone. Uh, and we are going to have 24-hour uh, a day uh, video monitor sec security, so if people do uh, decide to, you know, get a wild hair, well, I'll, I'll see if they can catch me. Well, we'll catch it, <laughs> and you'll probably hear from the sheriff that evening. So uh, don't think about it. Uh, we don't, again, we, we want and expect everybody to be safe, and this is the only way we can do that. So um, let me talk about a couple other things that I think are going to be important to people uh, as we go through this. Uh, Glenn had said, you know, a, mi a few minutes ago that, you know, you can talk to his superintendent. Well, that's true, although the superintendent isn't going to be standing around outside the construction zone waiting for people to come talk to him. Uh, he's going to have a day job that he's going to have to do. So what I would really ask that everybody do is that whenever there's any questions or any comments, the person to contact is me. Okay, I'm, I'm the guy. The buck stops here. 
Um, and uh, if you have either a question or a comment or a concern to express, if something doesn't look right to you, if you see something that looks unsafe, if you're just not sure what does this mean, please contact me. And we'll put out something in an email blast to everybody that will have my information. Uh, if you want to write something down now, uh, I'll give you uh, both an email address and a cell number. My email address for this project is Duane, that's D-U-A-N-E, at lagunacarib.com. And my cell number is 239-227-3929. And what I would ask is that you not phone me, but you text me on that number, because I'm going to be on the phone a lot of times, and if, you know, I, you, you don't want to have to leave crazy email or voicemails and have me try to figure out what it is you're, <laughs> you're trying to say. Why don't you just text me uh, basically your name, your lot number is real helpful, and uh, a brief statement of whatever it is you want to talk about, and provide me your uh, you know, contact information, your telephone number or email, and I will get back to you. And that way um, you'll get a, an answer or a response as quick as possible. And also another thing that we're going to do is we're in the process of having our um, online presence redesigned. Uh, Bow Stern is doing that work for us. Uh, I know a lot of the folks in the community are aware that Bow Stern has been working with Cypress Woods RV Resort to uh, come up with a new uh, you know, branding and logo for the resort. Uh, but they also happen to be our marketing consultants. So they're working on finishing up this uh, website as well as a Facebook page. And one of the key elements of the website is we're going to have a project development blog. And on that blog, it's going to be me and, and probably Jim Hamilton between the two of us. We're going to post periodically updates. What's going on? You know, what's happening next? Uh, you know, what's on this week in terms of construction. Um, we'll talk about what's going on in terms of sales processes. And we'll also have Q&A so that some of these questions that you all are lobbing at me or questions or concerns or complaints or whatever, uh, we're going to actually post those on this blog so everybody can see what is concerning people. And that way we want to make sure everybody is, is, is aware of everything as we can so that people don't feel like they're sitting in the dark. So uh, that's essentially all that I have in terms of our presentation and we'd like to open it up to any questions and, and we'll try to answer them if we can. Okay, uh, the first one here, uh, this one a lot of people have asked really for the timeline. We you know, discussed a little bit, but the heaviest traffic will be what, the first 30 days or so? Well, as Glenn said, um, they're going to be doing a little bit of site prep first, right? Okay, and that'll involve basically mobilizing some heavy equipment and bringing it in to do whatever they have to do for site prep. And as soon as that's far enough along, after a few work days, then the heavy hauling will start. And because we set this up to be front end loaded as much as possible, because we want to get the heavy hauling done sooner. Um, basically, because we have fewer people in the resort right now, that just makes it safer and more convenient for everybody. We would expect that that heavy hauling uh, would be past its peak within the first you know month or so, give or take. And then after that, they'll continue to be more and more deliveries, you know, on flatbed trucks and the pipe and the, you know, there'll be asphalt trucks coming in when we're doing paving and lime rock trucks hauling in base material. Um, flat buds, flatbed trucks will be hauling in manholes and, and, and so forth. Uh, but that will be a much, much lower level of traffic. So probably starting in October sometime, you'll see the traffic drop off quite a bit. And it'll continue pretty steady at that point through the completion of all the major construction. So if we have no major delays, you know, hurricane damage or whatever, you know, that work should be pretty much done by uh, the early part of February. Okay, um, what are your plans for dust control or cleaning up the roadways? Well, there's a couple things that we're doing on that. Part of dust control is doing the work during wet season. <laughs> and actually, that's the most important part that we can do for dust control. 
um, all the major earthworks are going to be done before dry season hits, which typically around here dry season hits in December. Sometimes a little bit later, sometimes a little bit earlier, but not, not much before December. And so all that work should be done. So really the open um, dirt work, you know, moving dirt, hauling dirt, placing dirt, all that should be done before the dry season starts. To the extent that we have to do any um, dust control activities, you know, spraying water, whatever, we can do that. We just don't think we're going to have to do much of that. What about clean up on the roadways through the, uh, the construction route? Well, the, the, what's gonna, it's going to be monitored daily, in fact, throughout the day by Cougar. That's one of the things they're doing, and they're working with their, their hauling subcontractor. Um, we anticipate probably um, when we're hauling a lot of dirt in and out, you know, that's going to be the, the messiest part of this. Uh, we'll probably end up doing a daily sweep. Of the of the approach roads, you know, necessary to get whatever's on there. They're also going to take steps inside the construction site to try and minimize, you know, the dirt that gets tracked out onto the asphalt. Uh, but it it should be cleaned up pretty much every day. And then once the dirt work is done, that really shouldn't there really shouldn't be an issue with anything on the road. Okay. Uh, during the heaviest traffic, we know the the gates will be opened and you'll have someone stationed up there. Um, how long would someone be up there and how long would the gates be open? And then what happens after, say, October when your construction drops off or the traffic drops off? Do we just go back to c vendors using codes or getting in through some other means? T to be honest, there's going to be enough deliveries that we really don't want to have the gates closed during normal construction hours, which is, as I said before, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and, and there will be somebody stationed at the guardhouse full time throughout that process. So we don't think there should be much of a security issue during those daytime work hours. In the night, of course, then, you know, the gates will shut and there'll be the normal um, access control. Right. Uh, will the hedge between, uh, you know, our community through C and D and then your section be removed at any time? You know, that question came up six months ago, and, and the answer is the same now as it was then. No, we don't need to do anything to that hedge. Uh, it sits right on, uh, or actually slightly, inside the C&D property line, and our drainage doesn't require us to go in and, and really mess around with the, the root line. I mean, is it possible some piece of equipment might damage, you know, one of the plants? Sure, and if so, we'll, we'll take care of that. Okay. Um, is there any plan now or in the future to put an entrance at the intersection of A, C, and D, which is that grassy lot uh, that you and I looked at the other day? No, no. Our, our approved plan, which has to go through county approval, only has the two entrances that exist now, and that's what we're going uh, we, to stick with long term. Okay. Uh, why is the uh, FPL power line uh, easement not being used as your construction entrance like originally planned well we tried to do that but the uh, there's there's only two ways to get into that access easement one is with our friends to the north and I will be very careful about what I say about that <laughs> I don't want to get into trouble but we had a um, a dust up with those guys actually just a few weeks ago with with Cougar out there and let, let's put it this way they're not friendly towards our development of this property and the other choice um, it ended up with uh, lawyer's letters going back and forth and threats of calling sheriff's deputies and so forth. So that, that's not a viable option. The other, uh, and of course, even if the owners and managers of that property felt differently, their own residents would probably object. Uh, secondarily, we looked at um, accessing through the FPL easement through a, um, there's a five acre parcel um, that directly connects with the south end of the FPL easement were uh, you know, in Cypress Woods. Mm -hmm. And I talked to those owners, and they currently are running cattle on it. And um, they said, uh, well, I'll, I'll put it the way the guy told me, the husband of the husband and wife team. He said, my wife would kill me if I did anything to upset her cows. So uh, the answer is no, we don't even want to discuss it. <laughs> So because of that, we really had no other. Well, we, there was a third choice we could have looked at, 
and that was to, uh, and actually talked to the property owner on this as well, and that's the nursery on our eastern border of the property. Uh, and I talked to the owner of that nursery, and he said, you know, I'd love to help you out on this, uh, but the problem is that I'm already in court this year with property owners who are complaining about my construction traffic heading in and out of my, uh, uh, my, my uh, operation here. And so the last thing I can do is bring in more construction traffic in the middle of this lawsuit. So uh, we, that was strike three. At that point, we said, we're out. <laughs> we're going to have to do it through Cypress Woods. Okay. Uh, what route will the tr trucks be taking through the main entrance to get into E, and which entrances will they be using? Well, uh, we're going to end up using both of the existing entrances uh, to Section E uh, as they sit now. And the route will be to come up through the main gate from Luckett Road up to um, Brightwood. It's uh, Nightwood right here. Or Nightwood, yeah, center. right in front of the, um, um, the, club, the town center here. And make a right turn and go down. And then, uh, is, it, is it Brightwood, I believe? Make a left turn there and then go into our, uh, our two entrances. Um, we may, at some times, we may have one-way traffic. Other times, we may have two-way traffic. We're not sure. It'll depend on what's going on at that time. Um, you know, if we can get by with a single entrance with two-way traffic, great, we'll try to do it, but we can't guarantee that that'll be available a lot of times. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's low levels of activity, but not during the dirt hauling for certain. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll try to do a one way loop if we can and that makes a lot of sense, but even that we can't guarantee it just depends on what's going on. Uh what uh what is your plan for any damage uh that the roads may incur with the truck traffic? Well, we can anticipate there is going to be excess wear and tear on the roads. I mean that's just you know, hauling that much dirt, you're gonna have it. We actually talked about this um, in our board of directors meetings over the course of earlier this year. One of the budget items that we had established this year um, in the 2020 budget was to go in and do some, some um, resurfacing on the existing roads. And what we did is after our project you know, became real, after we purchased the property in January, uh, the board um, you know, decided that we should just defer that work until after we're done hauling, because um, no use repairing it and then turn around and, and mucking it up again. And so, um, and then the other thing is, is by the time we're finished, really the very last construction task we're gonna do is put the final lift of asphalt on the roads inside you know, uh, Laguna Carib. Well, that'd be a really good time for our asphalt contractor if, if the resort chooses to retain them for that reason to just have them you know come in and finish off the hall roads too and then any other parts of the resort that need to be done right so just for everyone asking the route is straight through the first stop sign up cypress woods resort drive make a right onto nightwood in front of the town center and then a left onto brightwood um, which will take up through d and then into the two existing entrances to E section or Laguna Carib. Yeah, that is correct. And I, I think this is a good point to bring up too, that one of the things that we talked about in our earlier staff meeting with the construction team was that, in fact, this was a suggestion that came um, from, um, was it from Gary? I believe it was. I, I believe so. Yeah, Gary Washburn uh, made the suggestion, well, why don't you just eliminate one or two of those stop signs? You know, and and that way the trucks aren't having to come to a full stop and then start up again. Why not just keep the throughput going? And I don't know that we're going to do that, but I think that's something that's worth looking into. Um, and if it keeps the flow better, you know, that that might be worthwhile. But again, it has to be looked at from a safety standpoint. And you know, if only if it works from a safety standpoint, would we do that? Okay. Uh, there's questions about the one-way or one-direction one, one direction roads, and I, I think that you just mean 
the traffic, once it enters into Laguna Carib, will have sort of a one-way route in and then out your other entrance. But there'll be cross traffic or you know, bi-direction traffic on the main roads going into the park, right? Yeah, there'll be two-way traffic on the roads. As to whether it's one way in and one way out, there'll be times when it's that, and there'll be other times when it's two-way both entrances. I, I can't really generalize because it depends on what scope of work's going on that week. Right, so through the park, it will be two-direction traffic through all of our roads, and those roads will be shared with residents in golf carts or whatever else, but during the heaviest construction, um, you really have to avoid those areas as much as possible because the dump trucks uh, cannot stop quickly, even if they're only going 15 miles an hour, and it may be hard for them to see someone uh, flying in front of them on a golf cart or a bicycle. So avoid those areas uh, anytime you can during the construction hours. That is correct. There, I'm sorry it's unavoidable, but that's just the way it has to be. Let's see. Um, will the workers uh, back there be in, instructed to not leave the main route and uh, during breaks and things like that not to wander around the rest of Absolutely. the park? Absolutely. No, they're, they have access only for the purpose of getting from the entrance to Cypress Woods to the entrance to Laguna Cree. That's it. And uh, they're not going to be out wandering around Lucky Lewin eating their lunches, you know, taking breaks, any of that stuff. Everything that they need as far as work on site will be on site, whether it's uh, uh, an area where they can, you know, take a break and eat lunch or whatever, or porta potties, whatever those needs may be. Parking as well, yes. Okay, I think we've addressed all of the questions so far. Uh, let me check if there's anything that came through email, but we've got through all of our YouTube questions and some of the earlier email questions. Um, one resident said, we consider it unsafe to leave the gates open for eight to 10 hours a day, six days a week. Um, you know, that, I, I don't know how unsafe that really is in the daytime hours with, you know, whether it's security or not, which it won't be, but someone stationed in the front to sort of monitor that traffic. Uh, there really is just no other way. I mean, you, you can't open and close those arms every time a dump truck tries to drive through. You'll, you'll wear out your uh, gates in about the first week. <laughs> right. Look, it... it <laughs> You know, for, for those out there concerned about, I think we'll just have to monitor it. And if we think we have, you know, some uh, traffic in here that doesn't belong in the day, then maybe we revisit the process. And we do have someone out there checking in individual trucks or, you know, standing and literally blocking traffic, uh, you know, to everyone who isn't a dump truck uh, and making them go through another way. But I, I think in the beginning, that's the only real way to make it work. And um, if we have to make a change down the line, we'll look at options. Uh, let's see what else. That may be all we have. David, could I uh, interject a couple things to our uh, residents? Um, first of all, I did want to say that um, residents may want to consider for the next six weeks uh, to defer your trips to the mail kiosk and dumpster to after six o'clock, just to avoid uh, conflict of traffic and self safety as well. Um, it just makes sense to have less traffic up and around that area. Um, the other thing is uh, with the announcement that we're gonna be reopening the Welcome Center next week, uh, the office area, uh, please mask, sanitation uh, at the entrance and social distancing once you're inside the foyer will be required. Um, that's just something that we have to continue to do for a while. And then lastly, uh, so the owners do know, uh, Dwayne and company have leased one office space from us in the Welcome Center. He'll be taking residency, I would assume, in the next 30 days or so. Is that correct? Yeah, that's our intent. We're uh, finishing up our marketing and sales campaign planning right now. So we would expect uh, sometime in September that uh, we'll have a sales office operating in there. Okay. Uh, 
let's see. Okay. Um, with the addition of tons and tons of dirt, will the elevation for Laguna Curry be higher than uh, section C and D? Well, it'll, it'll probably be a little bit higher. I mean, it's not going to be something that's noticeable. I mean, it's not like you're going to, you know, look up the hill at Laguna Curry. <laughs> Um, but um, in order to make the drainage work, uh, which we, we're doing a, f a few things that are a little different in Laguna Creek than what we've done in uh, Cypress Woods. And in part because we wanted to, you know, create a five-star first-class facility. And so we're doing, we're upgrading certain things that weren't done on Cypress Woods. And part of it is we're, we, we're going to a, what they call a closed drainage system. And what that means is instead of having water running, storm water running through swales and such, it's gonna go through storm sewers. And in order to make all that work with the inlets and having the, you know, water always flows downhill. <laughs> and so to make everything work from an elevation standpoint, um, it required that we bring in some additional fill dirt we're also replacing some dirt that was actually removed from the property uh, roughly a decade ago uh, by the former developer, so that's part of it. And then a third part of what we're doing is we're actually, um, uh, this will be more phase two work, uh, uh, it'll be mostly moving dirt around rather than importing it, and that is in phase two next year, we're gonna fill in the northeast end of the lake. And what that does is it allows us to put uh, a, a bigger pool and deck than we would otherwise be able to fit into the property. So those three things together account for why we need the, the 100,000 yards. So you're saying you, your work should not uh, cause any flooding to uh, no. C and, and D in Cypress Woods? All of our drainage from Cypress Woods and Laguna Creek all ends up in the same place. And our drainage system is designed to make it work with that existing drainage system. And that is part of what we went through in the very lengthy um, design and permitting process that w was recently completed with both Lee County as well as with uh, South Florida Water Management District. Okay. Everyone out there watching on YouTube, are there any other questions before we wrap this up? Dwayne, you're talking about grading. That'll all be graded from the edge of E and C into your system through catch basins and underground piping, right? Well, everything everything that falls within Section E will be collected within Section E. So we're not taking drainage from C and D. Right. Uh, but everything that falls within E will be collected and will go through that closed drainage stormwater collection system and there is a permitted outfall, which we end up, all of our water ends up going there. It's the same place it comes from, right. um, from Cypress Woods. Okay, that, that was my concern that it would be draining. If it comes from C and normally goes into to E or D into E, there's got, if you put it, the elevation is a little bit higher, then you've got to have some way for, some place for that water to go. Well, all of our, uh, um, our, our stormwater treatment, which is part of stormwater drainage, is done inside the lake. We have this existing lake now. We're going to reshape it a little bit. There'll be some excavation and some, eventually some fill as well in that lake. And all of our drainage will go to that lake. And it sits in that lake. And part of how this is how stormwater is done everywhere in Florida, pretty much the whole nation. It sits in the lake. It has to have a certain amount of residence time at which you know treatment takes place. Basically, the um, uh, oils and greases and bugs and everything that ends up in stormwater, you know, gets treated down to an acceptable level. From there, there's an outfall structure at which then, uh, when uh, you have high water, you know, during the rainy season, uh, which is right now. Uh, then that water overflows and then it goes into a, um, uh, a ditch system that takes it out to Country Lakes Boulevard, I believe is the ultimate discharge point. 
all three of the lakes in, in uh, A and D and E all are cross-connected. Right. So they're all supposed to have the same level. Now I know there's been an issue where the lake in A wasn't necessarily at the same level that it was in D, and I'm not sure if we figured out what was going on there. Or was it, you know, was something clogged up in a culvert? But all three lakes are cross-connected with underground culverts. Well, the, the pipe you're talking about in A to D, the elevation is too high. It was originally supposed to feed back and forth and, and level, but it's too low. But it still will level. Well, that's a low water to, aspect. Yeah, yeah right. and that's really not. They're designed to deal with high water. Right. And when it's high water, yeah, they, all three lakes will be cross connected right. and at the same level. Yep. Right. Or, you know, when we were transferring that water for irrigation before, that's because the D lake is lower than the A lake, so it's it's deeper, it had more water to use before we got down to dangerous levels. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So the there are two other questions on here. Um, why can't you provide an actual security guard to monitor uh, non-construction traffic? Well, it comes down to it's not our job to, to manage the security of this resort. Um, that's the job of the HOA to do that. And, uh, and if, if we tried to do it, um, we'd probably mess it up. <laughs> and we don't want to be blamed for doing that. It's really not our job nor our role to, to, to control the security. Um, uh, but a, a, at the same time, I mean, you know, David, you and I and Glenn, we've all been talking about this for weeks now. I mean, you know, we're going to try what we think works, and then we're going to be prepared to make adjustments as we go forward because, you know, who knows? I mean, once people start coming back to the resort, maybe things will change and we'll have to say, oh, we've got to rethink this a little bit. But what we, what we are not going to do is take over responsibility for resort security. That's not our job. Right. Okay, so the, um, we have a question about the arms being up or down. Right now, we think the left arm, uh, the, the guest arm, will be open, which will force all of the guest traffic to drive through uh, in front of the guardhouse, in front of the person, whether they're security or not. Uh, all, all of the construction traffic will be monitored going in. And then anyone else, they're still driving right by our security system, right by our cameras going in that direction. The resident arm will be, sorry, I'm not sure what happened to my meeting here. The resident arm will be um, down, and then you'll still have to use your, your same access to get through. No. No, we're yeah, going to have both sides open. And I think we agreed to leave the resident arm up. Okay. So both both arms will be up. The gates will be open um, during the during the work hours, uh, Monday through Saturday. They will be, and then everything will be shut down, including the white metal gates for evening security. Okay, and uh, to another question: No, the left gate will not be marked as construction only, um, because there will be other vendors or guests coming through that lane. Um, but again, if both gates are open, you know, then I we're going to discourage everybody who isn't construction to stay the heck out of that inside yes. lane. We're going to put up signs that make it clear. Don't go this lane unless you're construction. And if we see people coming through and they shouldn't, we're going to flag them down and say, no, you, you can't do this because it's really important to keep the construction traffic separated from everybody else as a safety matter. It's not negotiable. It's, it's really not negotiable. If we got a lot of traffic getting mixed up together, there will be accidents, and we can't, we can't have that. So all, everything that's not construction is going to have to go through the right-hand lane. Well, one thing, Dwayne, to remember is end result is everybody funnels into one lane. To get through the uh, the swinging gates, that's correct. But there's quite a bit of weaving distance gates, between yes. the two gates, yes. so right. that you know, I think that should do it. But again, you know, we're going to try this, and if we have problems, we may have to make some adjustments. Right. And, and you know, that's all we can do is do the best we can, and then be prepared to to adjust. Well, I do want to interject one thing that I think the board and David and, and Dwayne were going to have to talk about is 
once October does arrive, okay, not only are people bringing in their rigs, but renters are coming on with their rigs as well. We've always used what we call the center lane for them to stop, get out of their rig, come to the gatehouse to get the information they need or whatever. I think that that's going to be an issue we have to talk about because the big construction equipment, I'm sure, is going to need that lane for swinging in you know, and out because of the size of, of the construction rig. So I think we're going to have to look at our signage, David, that's already out there because I think one says center lane for motorhomes. I think we're going to have to look at the signage as well and work through these, like Dwayne says. You know, we, we don't have a foolproof answer yet. We have to take it um, week by week. But these are things that we're going to have to discuss. Signage definitely has to be adjusted and changed. Yes. There'll be additional signs that aren't there now that are going to go up for construction. But the existing signs, I mean, I, you know, we may have to change them or, you know, <laughs> put a cloth over them or something, you know, so that they're not confusing. Right. right. Yeah, I, I think... Um, you know, we could probably try any uh, you know, returning renters or owners who are coming back instead of checking in in the front as they come through the gate. If the gates are open for construction access in the daytime, they can head straight to their lot, park the rig, uh, and then they can come back down to the gate or to the uh, welcome center in a car afterwards and get their swipe cards or do sign in for the season for mail, do whatever they have to do. But there may not be much of a reason if the gates are open for them to stop out front in the uh, the way of the construction vehicles. That's a good point. And, and then probably then what we need to do is like next week, let's put together like a revised instruction for people on how to handle arrivals and check-ins and so forth because right. this is going to be a big deal that's how most seasoned owners do anyway guys they swipe their own self in go yeah. set up and then come back and that's the next something day. your guy will need to just be aware of and be prepared to flag them over right for the people who you know owners coming back who can get to their lot that makes sense if it's a new renter who's never been here before, they probably need to stop, figure out where the lot is, get a map, that sort of thing. So it won't be good for everyone, but it, at least, you know, some of the people, we have owners who come back and they go straight to the, the building to sign in. And that there's no reason for that. I mean, you know, just come an hour later once you're, you're settled in and, uh, you know, and sign in then or call us and let us know, you know, hey, I just pulled in, I'm coming down shortly, wait for me if it's at the end of the day, but we don't want uh, anyone stopping unnecessarily. Well, this is all good discussion because, I mean, you know, the more we can identify now, the better, because otherwise, you know, we're going to spend the first couple of weeks going, oh my God, we should have thought about that. <laughs> so that, this is helpful that we're doing this. And Dwayne, what we will do too, we will revisit our gate greeter program. We normally start in November on weekends, okay, and December weekends. And then we go full blown seven days a week, usually from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Um, many visitors come for our gates that are just, just looking at our resort. It's, it's mind boggling how many we have come through. Well, we're and gonna have even more now with Laguna Carib selling lots in there. Oh, yes, it, it's gonna more than double. But I think we'll have to revisit the gate reader program. Um, we certainly don't want, uh, you know, the gate guard there and then the greeter being there feeling they have to run across the lane to answer a visitor's question or a check-in situation. So I want the viewers that are listening right now to know we will revisit the gate reader program and how it's going to have to be tweaked a bit this year to accommodate safety and traffic, but still give the service that we're used to giving at the gate, okay? Okay, um, I, apparently we sent an email a few weeks ago uh, that mentioned security would be provided. I'm, I'm not sure if something was misstated in there. I don't know the actual email, but I have a few YouTube um, comments that we we said we would be providing security. And I don't think that was the case. I think you just said you would have someone there to monitor the construction traffic. 
uh, but not an actual security guard. But I'd, I'd have to pull up the email and see. It just it, it's well, coming in that several was, it times. had to do with just the limited activity that lasted just a couple days, which you know was over three weeks ago. Okay, um, I have serious concern that residents that have lots directly along the construction route can safely enter and leave their lots. It's true. Well, you can do it, but um, you know, you're just going to have to be aware. Um, I, there's no getting around it that you're you're going to have to look before you pull out. Listen, I. Um, uh, my only form of exercise that I get other than yard work is I ride my bike throughout the neighborhood that I live in. Uh, and it's just regular public streets. It's not a private resort like this is. And, uh, you know, I have my head on a swivel every time I get on that bicycle and ride around because there's all kinds of yahoos that back out of their driveways and don't look. And, you know, it's to, for self-survival, I've learned how to... <laughs> Keep an eye because otherwise, and, and then even beyond that, just riding a bike on a public street, there's all kinds of yahoos that cut you off. And, you know, you just have to be of a safety mindset. I don't know what else we can do other than it just has to be uh, communicated and reinforced that this is not the normal Cypress Woods for the next six months. Okay. Uh, and I, I did find that email that a few people are referencing, and there's a paragraph, it was from August 12th, um, Cypress Woods gate security concerns through construction. Uh, when major construction begins in the next few weeks, the contractor will provide a daytime gate security person to control access and security for incoming construction traffic of workers, vendors, and construction vehicles. So. You know, that, that is what's happening. You'll have someone out there monitoring the construction traffic, but it is not a security guard who will be monitoring everyone that comes in. Um, I think, you know, again, it's, it's the daytime. It's Fort Myers. We're on a dead-end road, and there will be a ton of traffic. So nobody is sneaking in the community during those hours in the daytime, right? I, I think that's everyone's big concern um, in the community, and, and most of the comments I'm getting are about that. But, again... This seems to be the only way to, to do this, and if we have to make a change, I think we'll, we'll look at those changes when they're necessary. But again, we have cameras in the front. There will be people standing there. There will be construction traffic in and out, uh, and this is only in the daytime you know, while someone is stationed there. So there will be no nighttime access through open gates. Um, unless someone decides to walk through the gate and walk through the sidewalk that leads you around the gate. Uh, so we're not exactly secure anytime. We have a sidewalk that literally walks around the gate. So, you know, I, I get everyone's security concerns, but there will be so much traffic there that nobody is sneaking past unannounced. And I do have a lot of comments that the uh, the right arm on the owner side should be down, forcing everyone who's not an owner to run through the left lane. But again, they'll no. be moving right through, and the the gate will be open. So we're, we're not really all we're doing is merging traffic into the construction lane at that point, which um, is unacceptable. But they still have the same access that they would through the right lane. I mean, they're, you can still just drive right by the gate either way. But now it's a safety issue as well. But there's a lot of uh, a lot of comments that the right lane, or the right arm should be closed. And again, that's something else we'll, we'll watch and see if we see cars flying in, not slowing down when they enter. Maybe we can look at closing that later on. But you know, I think everyone is in agreement. We're we're really taking every precaution that we reasonably can at this point, and we just have to hope for the best. Well, traffic safety trumps security. Okay. Uh, that's what it comes down to and mixing the traffic going through the left hand lane is just not going to work it's just and it'll slow down construction as well yeah i, I don't i don't see anything else uh in here um it's just the, a few of the same comments about the uh, the arms and security and things so um Any, anything else from the board? 
I'm in. Dwayne, any closing comments? I know we'll be sending out an email with your contact information for everyone. Uh, you know, a, an email and phone number for people to get in touch with you uh, and submit any questions they have. Because if they come to the office with most of those questions, Brittany and I most likely won't have the answer. So everything can run through Dwayne. Mm -hmm. And um, that should go out maybe tomorrow. You think you can get something over to me Monday? Yeah, before everything starts. So in the next few days, there'll be an email going out with Dwayne's contact information. And um, other than truck speeds being monitored, uh, that's another concern of people. I think we're done. Well, um, Deb, I don't know if, if you wanted to talk about speed monitoring. Uh, that's something that the board had a discussion on informally last week. Yeah, I don't think we've come to a conclusion on that. Um, and I'm glad we haven't because I think there's been a lot more information given out today for the board to consider collectively. So I know uh, that uh, the board should be prepared to uh, get together early next week to start brainstorming on all of this conversation so we can fine tune it a little bit and troubleshoot just a little bit more. Okay. Okay. I'd like to just add, Deb, that um, when the um, construction people talked with us, I'm, I feel a little bit better knowing that they're going to be on top of those truck drivers right. making sure they do what they're supposed to do. Well, there's two things I want to tag on to that, Barb. Um, Jim Roop and company does a superb job on our neighborhood watch program. And I think if he would like to get together with his group and they take all this information, say, okay, for the next six months, how can we invest more in our neighborhood watch program with some specific walkthroughs, drive-throughs, whatever the case may be. But I would love to see if Jim Roop could come up with something a little bit more detailed and more specific to what our needs are going to be during construction time. Um, and the second thing I was going to say, did you know I, I just forgot it, but it was almost important. <laughs> I'm trying to think where it was, so I can't remember, but I would like, what did you say, Byron? What was your question? Oh, on the information. I do want to let the community know that um, this is the first time that the boards had an opportunity to meet with the entire project team. And what we've learned today, absolutely, without a doubt in our mind, we are dealing with veteran highly trained experts. This is not their first rodeo. This is something they do for a living. They have troubleshooted. They know what they're doing. Their interest is definitely in creating the best experience that our residents can have during this time. So I just wanna say that I think we're in great hands, partnership with this um, project team. Yes, because several of them talked of safety being the most important thing. Absolutely, absolutely. So with that being said, is there anything else, gentlemen and ladies? Are we done? Well, thank you all for coming and David will be getting a lot of information out. Your board will be getting together with the developers and we'll fine tune some of your concerns and we'll feed it back to you as soon as we possibly can. Everyone have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.